What do you think we should do today? How about some wiring? So in this video, I'm going to cover how to rewire your Model A. What you should look for to decide whether you should replace the harnesses or not. Give you a few tips and tricks on how to put the harness in, where things go. And, and, as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to install turn signals on a Model A. If you remember from the last video, I also mentioned that I planned on getting this running in this video. I apparently forgot the fact that there's no wiring in the car. I guess we need to address that before we get it running. I started getting ready to put this harness back in and gave it a quick once over and realized that it had a bunch of issues. My original plan was to just repair those problem areas and put it back in. And the more I got looking at it, the more issues I found to where I decided to just replace it all. And this did have a turn signal set up on it from when I originally bought the car, I wired in the turn signals. So I'm going to try to save as much of that harness as I can and adapt it to the new harness. Some of that I'll replace. Now there are some things that I did on it that I'm going to change. Like I use just generic connectors like this. Use just a plastic wire loom to protect the wires and regular old shiny electrical tape. I'm going to change all of that to try to make it look like a more original setup. I'm going to use the, the lacquered cloth wire loom. I'm going to use the original bullet style ends with the original style connectors just to try to make it look like a little more of a factory type setup. Looking at the harness, this is what I ran into for issues and why I decided to replace everything. And I'm assuming this is what caused the chafing, but a bunch of these wires are actually chafed through right there and there. This one's about ready to break off actually. That's chafed through. Uh, so I'm surprised that none of these actually shorted out. Now obviously you could go through and repair all this. And if that's the only issue, maybe I would bother with that. But going through the rest of the harness, the ends that go to the horn, those have already been replaced with just generic ends. Again, the headlights I had on it when I did that, I replaced those ends and just used generic connectors. And again, I'd like to go back to the bullet style connectors that originally came on this. There's a few other spots that were chafed through this crossover that goes from the left to the right headlight. There was a spot underneath the radiator. I'm not sure what happened with that, but that had chafed through a little bit. So again, there's nothing catastrophic here. This certainly would be repairable, but for the cost of a new harness, I think I spent about $125 on every harness for this thing. That's the main headlight harness, the wiring for the coil to the terminal box, the ignition switch, the crossover harness that goes from the left to the right tail light. Um, realistically, that's not much money to have a little peace of mind and know that you have a good solid wiring harness at that point. So I think it's a worthwhile investment, especially where you already have or where I already have the harness out. And if you're in the same situation, it's something to definitely consider. You know, whether your harness is in this kind of condition or better, if it's all out, it may be worth just replacing it. So I'm going to go through take off what I have added on here, take all of the tape off, the zip ties off, the uh, plastic conduit off, try to save as much of what I added onto this as I can. We'll look at the new harness, wire and the turn signals into that harness, and then get it ready to go back into the car. So now I'm going to work on dissecting this original harness. I'm going to remove all the wires that I had in it for the turn signals. I'm going to reuse the wires I had for the tail lamps because they were already bound together. These are all wires that I pulled out of a harness out of a newer car. That's a great way to come across some good wiring if you don't want to go out and buy the stuff. Parts store wiring could be pretty expensive. If you manage to get a wiring harness out of a newer vehicle, you get a variety of colors and lengths, gauges. It's all really high quality stuff. You go buy some wire off of Amazon or something and you don't know what you're getting. So this is a good option to get some expensive quality wiring. So like I said, I'm going to remove these. The front ones, I'm going to replace the lead from the turn signal switch to the brake light switch. Now, one last thing to remember before you're done with the old harness is that the headlight switch cover has to come off and onto the new harness before you add anything else to it because once you put the brake light switch and all that other stuff on there, you won't be able to get this on. So it just slides on off over all the wiring like this. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to get it off of there.
clean that up and get it slid onto the new harness. While I'm thinking about it, like I said, the wiring in these is pretty simple, but Snyder sells this really nice wiring diagram that you can pick up. They're only a couple bucks. There's plenty of them online as well. Also, this is done by the Model A Ford Club of America. This is really essential if you're going to be restoring a car, but even if you're just making a driver it's got a lot of really really good information about how things hook up the differences between the years it's just a really great reference and i'll put a link to this down in the description it's free it's a pdf you just download it print it off there's also this if you're doing turn signals depending on what you're using for a turn signal setup i'm using a signal stat 900 you can just google and come up with this i'll put a link to this as well down in the description if you happen to be using this same one but it gives you the wire colors, the different leads where everything has to go. I was going to try to match all these colors up just to make wiring a little bit easier. A couple of them will be different. Like I said, I already have the rear wiring. One of them is black, the other one is a dark green. So I'll just make a note of that as I'm doing it. Kind of make your own wiring diagram so that if you have to go back through and troubleshoot or anything like that, you know what wire goes to what and what color goes away. Now here's where things can start to get a little confusing. This is your brake light switch. This is the old harness. If you're not running turn signals, this is the new harness. These two terminals just hook up to that. It's power in from your headlight switch and power out to your brake lights. So very straightforward. If you are running turn signals, you only use one of these now. So you still need power in from your headlight switch. However, the wire that comes off of this and goes to your brake lights, you no longer use. Instead, you run this wire back up to the turn signal switch, which feeds through that and back so you'll have turn signals. So what I need to do with this new harness is figure out which one of these leads to my taillights. And then either remove the wire or I'm just gonna tape the ends of it off. So to do that, I'll dig out the continuity tester. Put one end on your green wire at your tail lights and then just check both of these so obviously it's this one right here that's the wire we're not going to use so for right now i'm just going to mark it with a marker that way i don't forget which one it is eventually i'll either tape it off or clip the end off it or we'll, we'll do something but for right now that will tell me that we're not using this one and if you want to double check it Sometimes things just happen. Just to be safe, double check the other one. Yeah, so that one, the one that's not marked, and does go to the headlight switch, so we know we have the right wire now. So here's a little more confusion for you. Now this is the crossover if you're running a right-hand taillight. If you only have a left-hand taillight, it just hooks into the main harness and that's all you need. If you do have a right-hand taillight, they sell this little extension harness that will adapt to that. So without turn signals, all you do is attach the green to the green. This little lead then goes to your left-hand taillight. I'm sorry, your left-hand brake light. And the rest of the harness goes over. This green goes to your right-hand brake light. Black to black. That would be your left-hand taillight right here. And then it would feed over to your right hand tail light. Now again, with turn signals, obviously you can't just feed both lights together. So the way you do that is the black still goes to the black for the tail lights. Those both come on together as they should. And now you no longer use this wire, as we mentioned earlier, blacking it off from the brake light switch. So you won't use this wire anymore. The secondary harness that you're going to run back with that will now replace that wire. So now with this crossover wire, your right hand turn signal is going to tie into that. This lead will not be used. So you just tape that off, cut it off, whatever you want to do with it. And that will feed your right hand brake light slash turn signal. This one will now feed directly into your left hand brake light or turn signal. It depends on which color you go with. These aren't the original colors for the switch. 
But whichever wire you run back for whichever side, obviously you tie into that. As I mentioned, I ended up just ordering all new wiring harnesses. I got everything through Snyder's, which is where I order most of my stuff from. So this was the main harness, which is this right here. I also got the taillight crossover harness, which this came in some stuff that I bought a while ago. But this is for the optional right-hand taillight, as most of them only had a left-hand taillight. That's this harness right here. You've got this harness, which is the cutout on the generator, back to the terminal box to power that up. And all of these come with wiring schematics, so they're pretty easy to install. The main harness came with this one right here. This is the other harness that powers from the terminal box to the dash and the ignition switch. Again, this whole setup was like maybe 130 bucks. It's well worth it to just have new wiring to work with and know that you're not going to have any issues with that. Now there's this little jumper wire here that just goes from the coil to the terminal box. And these are the little bullet ends that I was talking about. These are the connectors that are used with these bullet ends. So I'm going to use all of this along with some of the lacquer coated wire loom to try to make this look like a little more original setup. Let's take a quick look at the connector for the headlight switch. Now as you can see there are actually four positions on the headlight switch. The plastic spot here is off and you've got these three positions. Now the way this works is that the corresponding positions have continuity with each other. So when the switch is in a certain position, this post, this post, and this post will all be connected. And the same thing holds true in a different position. The center ones will all be connected. These end ones will all be connected. And what you're doing here is if you look at this post, see how these all three of these are actually connected with this bar. So regardless of what position your switch is in, any of the three on positions will give power to that. Now what this is right here, this wire is power in from the generator. That's what powers the switch and all the lights. This is power out to your brake light switch. So no matter what, in any position or in the off position, your brake light switch will still have power, so you'll still have brake lights because it's tied indirectly to the, the power in right here. Same deal here, you look at these. These posts are all tied in together even though there's only one actual connection here. This is power to your tail lights. That way in any of the on positions, whether it's parking lights, high beam or low beam, on the headlight switch, you'll have tail lights on, which obviously you would want. If you look right here, these things are all separated. So what you have is three separate sets here that are all powered differently depending on the position of your light switch. So in high beam, you'd have power to one of them. Low beam, you'd have power to one of these. And parking lights, you'd have power to one of these. So none of these are powered at the same time as each other. But they are powered together with the taillight one, no matter which one of these has power, if that makes any sense. And then the center post here is actually power to your horn. If you look at the headlight switch itself, you can see what I mean, there's these three nubs along with this brass ring. Depending on where you select that, we'll make a connection with any of those terminals. Got the taillight crossover harness on. This is how this is gonna get wired up. So your original taillight wire will still hook into this. Your brake light will not. This is the additional harness for the turn signals. Your right hand, which I believe is the black one, will tie into this. This other end got taped off. So that will power your right hand turn signal and brake light. This other lead here will power your left hand tail light and the green one will power your left hand turn signal. Off of the old harness I took some of the cloth covering and used that to cover up these turn signal wires to give it again a little more of a correct appearance. And then I used some of this cloth tape. I like to use this anywhere where you can see it. It just has a better appearance than the shiny tape. So I tied the two harnesses together with that. Fed that up to the front. So once I get this thing back in the car, I'll put the ends on this, get it tied into the switch. Here is the brake light switch. And as I mentioned earlier, one of these wires you're not going to use. So this wire that goes to the brake lights, you do not connect that. Instead, this terminal runs a wire from here back up to the turn signal switch, which obviously you have to supply your own wire. So in this case, the wire off of my switch is gray. I don't have any gray wire. I have this white wire, so it's gonna be close enough. Now, the little connection end on that is obviously this little round terminal or this little guy right here. 
Now I don't want this little plastic thing on it because I don't like the looks of that. That's why I cut all the other ends off to begin with. I wanted original style ends on them. So my little trick for doing that is to take one of these ends, clamp it down to the bench or the vise or whatever you have handy. Get yourself a box cutter, try not to cut your hand off. Get in here and just slice that. There you go. All right. Now we just have a bare metal terminal to give it the same style end as this. See how it's got this black end on it here. You're going to use some heat shrink. So the way I like to do this, especially when you're trying to get this somewhat resemble that so it's bigger and thicker, is use two pieces of different sizes. So this will fit nicely over that. And we've got this larger stuff that I'm going to slide on afterwards, which will build it up to make it more closely resemble this. It won't look exactly the same, obviously, but it'll be close enough. Look a little more original than the, the plastic end that would have been on it. So just get a rough idea on this, how long you want that. Cut it off so it's somewhat reasonably close to the same. Get your larger diameter piece, same deal. You want to cut it to length. I make it just a little bit shorter than the smaller diameter one. I don't make the same mistake that I usually do and forget to put these on before you crimp the end on. So make sure these are on first. Big one first. And the small one. A good solid crimp on there. Get your heat shrink slid into place. You can use a lighter, heat gun, or whatever you want. Just get the smaller one shrunk on first. Slide your larger one up on there. Like I said, it's not exactly the same, but it certainly looks more accurate than this blue plastic end. I'll attach that right onto there. And if I can find some more cloth covering, I'll throw it over this wire. If I can't, then we'll just attach it to that and run it back up to the turn signal switch. Working on the back end of the harness where it ties into the taillight crossover. I'm going to put these little bullet ends on here. So make sure your wire's trimmed back. There's plenty of extra wire here, but when that's all soldered on there, we'll just trim the end of that off. Now I am going to use a little tiny piece of heat shrink between this connection here because this wire has a smaller jacket than the cloth wire. You can see there's no gap in there. On here, there is a little bit of a gap. It moves around a little bit, so I want to seal that up a little bit. So just a little piece of heat shrink on there will take care of that. It won't really be noticeable. Now, originally these are crimped. I don't know if you can see that. In that little groove, there's a tool you can use to crimp that onto the wire, and that's how they're supposed to be done. I don't have that, so we're just going to solder it instead, which will work just fine. So, a little flexage on your, your wire here. And don't forget your heat shrink like I almost just did. Get that on there. That on there. You can see it a little better there. Just soldered in from the tip. You get that hot, it'll just suck the solder up in there. We'll go in with a piece of sandpaper and just clean the end of that off. There, nice and flat on the end there. Still on there good and rugged. We need to invest in some new lighters.
So I did end up with a little bit of solder on that. You don't want that because obviously it won't fit into the connector well. So I just cleaned that off of the sandpaper a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit larger piece of heat shrink and just bridge the gap between those to seal that up good. Once it's cooled off, just double check it with one of these connectors, make sure it still goes in there. So I'm going to do something a little different than what I mentioned earlier. Now, if you remember from earlier on, I had taped this wire off. This was originally the feed for the left-hand brake light. Since that circuit is now the right-hand brake light slash turn signal, you don't need this. I forgot at the time that I actually have one more thing to wire into this circuit. Now, I have one of these. This is an LED turn signal slash third brake light that suction cups to the back window. I am not a huge fan of this. I really would rather not put this in the car. However, there's so many dumbass drivers on the road today, and I plan on driving this that I, something like this is just a little added insurance. I don't like the look of it at all, but I think the, uh, the benefit of having it there is will outweigh the negative look of it being in there. It's pretty small. It's not all that noticeable until it's lit up. So what I'm going to do is use that wire that I was originally going to tape off that's going to feed the right hand side of this. Now this wire that's going to feed the left hand turn signal, I'm going to do a pigtail off of that kind of like this one was and feed that back to the left hand side of this light. So I'm going to take a rough guess here, try to get it about the same length as this one would be. So this is going to feed down to that tail light. We want it to reach back to about where this is. So right around there should be a good length. This is just a leftover wire from that original two-wire harness that I had. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky trying to get this doubled up end inside one of those bullet connectors. Kind of has to be perfectly round and stretched out as far as you can get it to make it just small enough to fit through there. I don't think that's going to, but we'll try it. Oh, look at that, it actually did. Again, there's plenty of wire sticking out, but you can just cut that off and we're done. Same deal again, I'm going to take a really small piece of heat shrink and just slide it up over that joint just to seal it up a little bit better. There, it should seal it up pretty good. It looks somewhat correctish. So this setup should be good to go now. So we've got our left hand tail light feed for our left hand brake light, feed for our left hand third brake light, and the feed for our right hand third brake light. I know this is a big shocker, but we ran into a couple of issues. So I got the harness set into the car and found out that it, it does not reach the left hand tail light. I'm not sure if this is an original tail light to the car or if this is aftermarket. The leads are probably half the length, if not less than that, than they are on the right tail light. I'm sure the right tail light is aftermarket because I don't believe this had two tail lights originally. What's odd about this is the wires were actually backwards, so I was a little confused initially. The green wire was in the taillight spot, the black wire was in the brake light spot, which is backwards. My plan for this is I'm going to take, these are the leads that came out of it. This is an old crossover harness from one taillight to the other. I'm going to cut these off, splice them on to these ends, so they'll have nice long leads on it. They have to actually go through the rear fender, wrap down around underneath the frame and back up under the back of it. So these wouldn't do that. Again, I'm not sure if this is original taillight, but where these were in the wrong spot, I'm gonna guess it probably isn't. But I'm gonna get these spliced onto here, get some long leads in there, get that all crimped and heat shrunk, and we'll get this put back together and we'll take a look at it then. Got the leads lengthened on the left-hand taillight. They are significantly longer than it was, as you can see and get the wires actually in the correct sockets this time. So I just use these little crimp connectors this time. These work really good. Put a little heat shrink on them afterwards and it's good to go. 
So to get this thing back in, that should be plenty long enough to reach the harness. So once again, this video has turned out to be way longer than what I had planned on doing. So this is going to be another two-part video. I don't have too much left to do on this thing, so it shouldn't be too long before the second part comes out. Thank you again for watching. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. And also, if you do the social media thing, check down in the description there. I'll put some links to our old InstaFace and Spacebook and all that stuff down there. You can go check that out. I also list parts for sale on the Instagram account. So that's where you want to go if you want to buy some junk. So thank you again, and we'll see you next time.